all about treating you like family. They treated me like family for years, so it only made sense that they were a part of this podcast. It's your boy Samer hanging out with my boy Stank and our so guest you. for the night, Anthony Becht, former Tampa Bay Buccaneer legend, Anthony Becht. What's up, Anthony? What's up, guys? Yeah, man, it's good to be back on. I, you know, I. The last time we spoke, I didn't launch any of my podcasts yet. And the fact that you guys have a bunch of sponsors, I feel kind of bad. I don't have a sponsor yet. So um, you guys are rolling, man. I like it. Thanks, man. Appreciate I'm trying that. I'm trying to get to your podcast level. I'm new to the game. So we're kind of you're, you're going to go the likes. way I, past us. <laughs> I appreciate the likes. I, yeah, I'm getting a lot of good downloads and stuff like that, which is great. But I appreciate the retweets and, uh, and, and getting it out there for me. Thank you. Well, man, last time we had you on here, you – we're like some sort of shaman, bro. Everything you said about this team in terms of how they would look, how they would play, and how they would have to kind of get things rolling. So far, after three weeks, it's been pretty accurate, man. Um, you know, they they look like they needed the preseason, like you said. They look like they were going to lean a little bit on the defense, kind of like what you said. So um, it's good to have you on after the fact because now you're just like, you know, hey, guys, uh, I can't miss. So, um up to what you've seen so far in these first three weeks, um, what are you? What is your feeling on this team uh, and what and the offense specifically as well? I I love it. I mean, what's not to like? I mean, I, it's listen. Every game you'll see improvement, and that's what you're seeing. Um, you know, Brady is. I'll tell you, he's got to feel real good about his opportunity in the pocket and not getting hit. And I mean, I think he's got a lot of time. I mean, he really does. He doesn't need that much time, honestly, to, to survey the field because again there's too many options i mean he's he really knows where he's going pre-snap so you know it's it's just really can another guy win or do something against a look that allows him to get off to a bigger play that he's not already seeing that he knows he has right so the only thing that can stop him is is or the jets or excuse me the bucks is that look either the the uh the the offensive line just completely uh, you know, collapses on them, which I don't see that happening. They're all playing pretty well, play to play. And, you know, look, can you get a supportive run game? And and and, and what I've seen is I, there have been some tweaks in the run game, strategic tweaks. Now, you're not seeing the 100-yard you know, rusher, which, you know, we did see one two weeks ago, but it's okay because they're throwing – I really think they should lead with the pass, not the run. So – uh, you know, it's all about strategic runs in those situations. I really like the four-minute offense that they had at the end of the game. I mean, look, they it wasn't a close game where they were like had to run the clock out. But again, it's part of that process of being able to get first downs with your legs, run the clock out. So it was something for them to work on, uh, a situational thing. But I, I like the offense, man. I mean, heck, uh, if everybody's healthy and out there, that's even better. I mean, that that's kind of the biggest thing, just – working around those kind of things but man I, now numbers wise i gotta admit i mean like I, mike evans and these guys like if they're expecting to get huge monstrous numbers i don't think you're going to find that with with a brady run offense because he's going to find so many different guys so i'm not looking for them to like oh okay two catches two yards two touchdowns like they got in the end zone they utilize them the way they needed to utilize them one and there are going to be some days where he's able to pop off and do his thing but if he's just popping off and doing his thing, he's just basically destroying the guy that's over him, which could ha it could happen. I mean, because he's going to get that kind of coverage. But there are so many options that you know it's it should be sprinkled. Right? Even OJ, we talked about OJ. Yeah. You know, what would his role be? Man, he's he's looking pretty good right now, so he's getting opportunities. So there's enough balls to go around. The guys just got to make those plays when they come their way. Um. Anthony, you said you've seen some tweaks in the running game. It doesn't seem like we're that efficient running the ball, especially on first down and in obvious running situations. We don't really – we're not that really, really that successful. Um, what tweaks have you seen and, and where, why are we struggling to find an identity in the run game? Now, we spoke pre-game one, right? Is that the – we did? Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. Okay. I just wanted talked, to make sure. Last yeah. time we talked – Leonard Fournette signed as we were on the air. That's so we, right. Okay, you're so right. You're right. You're right. So okay. Yeah, I, was, I, was just, and it was, I wanted uh, to make sure. And I wasn't. I wasn't here for that. I know right, I kind of look like yeah. Poppy Latte, but no, you, you don't. I'm much better looking. <laughs> much better looking. So yeah. So uh, basically, um, so if you watch the first game and you know a little bit into the next game, you've noticed when we, when the Bucks run the football, they compact it, 
you see receivers coming inside trying to dig guys out and you know multiple with multiple tight ends set you know like two tight ends and then the, the receiver everything's just so jammed up and to mm -hmm. me I get why they want to bring that receiver in because they're trying to dig out somebody that's in the box. Well, number one, half of the time they do that, they're literally bringing the guy they're motioning in with in the box. And they're only bringing a guy in the box is because, you know, they know what's it's very predictable on how they're trying to kind of get it. Now, if you looked at this past game and then a little bit in uh, week two, you've noticed that it's either been one tight end, two tight ends, which I'm down with. I like that. And what happens is if you watch, if you go back and watch, I don't know if you guys got like game plan or whatever like that, go back and watch when it, what happens when the receiver comes in. It's very congested. There's no natural scenes. Everything's bunched up. Whereas if you see it with just Gronk, you know, on, in there or two tight end set and everybody gets on their blocks, you see the spacing. At least you can find a crease or a hole and pick something. Now, again, you said what's efficient. Why isn't – you're right. It's, it's not – in the sense that, you know, there's nothing happening as as far as except the long run Fournette had two weeks ago. But, you know, listen, you get four yards or more, that's that's a really good run in the NFL, right? So I kind of, in those situations, mixed in with the pass-first system, which I feel like that's what they should be. I think it's you're not going to have it's It's all about strategic runs and getting yourself in favorable position. So I think it's improving. And again, when you run, when you work your run game in, in the training camp, you, you, you really those are the runs you work. So you're going to run those. So the compacting and and bringing the, uh, the the receivers in and stuff. That's what they do, you know. So it's hard to just say, yeah, we got to change it all. We're going to run draws. We're going to split it out. Like you don't practice those things. But at the same token, they're not that hard to implement. And I see subtle changes there. So I, I, I'm excited about that because I really think it is going to give you a chance to pop something and get you a big run. And then from there, it's like, man, if you get anything like that, if you can get like 80 yards in this offense or more rushing, like you should be dominating the football game, in my opinion, because I just don't know how teams can defend the pass. Anthony, you were a tight end, right? So part of being a tight end is obviously <clears throat> knowing how to run block, how to pass block at times. So you should understand run blocking schemes. How does the Buccaneers' run-blocking scheme compare to other teams in the NFL that we see? Because when I watch another football game, it seems like every other team is able to get their back to the second level, whether they're spreading them out or even when they're compacted in on like an obvious third and one or a fourth and one, you still see these guys get to the second level and make plays. It's almost very rare that we've seen that so far in three weeks and almost never last year when we had B.A. here for his first year. What is different about this blocking scheme, if anything, that might be holding this team back in terms of developing that run game? You know, I, I, I'm all for systems that have a lot of double teams involved. You know, two guys moving guys to the next level. Because, you know, if you, can ha if you have a tight end that can block and you can utilize those things, you can get some tackles and guards together, centers and, and, and guards together, and just double teams up. I think that's the best way. Because you, one, you get movement. So you get start working your way to the second level. And then the goal is, is one of you two guys after movement, when that linebacker reacts, you go get to the second level. And now here you go. You're into the second level and now you're beating a safety or a DB. Uh, I, I see a little more one on one stuff with the Bucks, right? Uh, in the game, I remember there was a run. Ryan Jensen had a double team that was kind of a zone to the right. And, Ryan, uh, and Jensen went with. Uh, the guard and he and he did it perfect and then what he's supposed to do to climb up he just disregarded he just hung on it too long and it would have been a perfect like going that way and the back would have just went right off the butt and it would have been into the second level but he doesn't come off because he's so over aggressive on the double team and it doesn't get blocked and again it's something simple but it's uh, the awareness of it and honestly don't do a lot of that so I like that. You know, I like the double. I like, I see Gronk blocking by himself all day. I'm thinking to myself, why is this guy got to block one of the best players on defense by himself, the defensive end? I think it's ludicrous. I mean, should you be getting paid $9 million to do that? Yeah, I never did, but I, that, that's just the <laughs> fact right there. You should be getting paid a lot of money to block defensive ends because you shouldn't be able to do that. And he does a good job one on one. But why is he blocking one on one on guys? I want to see him and the tackle work together. I want to see those kind of blocks. Let him cut off backside or let him be the next level person. But, you know, I, everybody's got their own deal. You see, like, the te a team like the Broncos 
uh, that want to string everything out, let their backs hit it. Same with the 49ers. They string everything, and the back head can go outside if they hook it. He can stick his foot and go through the seam. Is or that he zone, can like a it. zone blocking? Yes, or, zone or, blocking? He can, or, or he can roll it in the back side. He has three options. And you, you really attribute that to the back. You have Fournette, to me, is a downhill between the tackle guys. So he lo- would love to see double teams and move up to the next beat. He wants to hit that now because that's LSU. That's what he did there. You know, he wasn't doing a lot of pitches and, and getting outside. He would love to just keep his vision from the, the outside pad of the tackle to the outside pad of the tackle and work from there. So, again, it's, it's like, okay, you got this guy. How do you kind of complement his skill set so that he can be effective? And I do see some things that are changing. But, again, it's, it's not becoming the spearhead of what they're doing in the run game. So, it'll get there. Just that Ryan Jensen play that I talked about that he didn't quite get it. That's a new little wrinkle as they see that and do it again. That, that has a better chance of, you know, popping off for them. So, we'll see how it goes, you know, this weekend versus a similar situation. Are they the only team that still – are they one of the few teams that runs that – scheme or is it 50 50 oh. across the board because it seems to me that it, it seems antiquated when i see other teams play a totally different way but i guess it's also magnified because yeah. i'm a buck fan honestly if, if it's if it's if you are in a system that says look we are going to be an aggressive front and we are going to dictate the line of scrimmage and we will assert the run game that's not the mentality for this system it's just not i mean i get it you know it's but i think that you can do those you can have that attitude and still be the prolific offense you want to be throwing the ball so uh again it's just it's just what they want to do how they do it and and just the balance and they're not really balanced with it because obviously you know they want to throw the football as much as possible because that's what the defense really allows them to do because they can't cover much of that so you know most of the routes that brady throws i the guys are open right i mean there's space it's just like if I had his level of quarterback play, and I would just imagine myself back there, I would, I would, I would say to myself, "Man, this is like really easy. I just gotta be uh, be on point on my throw." And you know, he missed a couple throws. Obviously, he he probably missed four throws in the first half, even though they did well. That he wants back, you know, because uh, the OJ one, uh, the Gronk corner route into the red zone. Yeah. Um, you know the the yeah. So though, you know, I mean, they scored on those things, but again, they're just. I mean, if people want to talk about Gronk. I mean, that, he ran by somebody there and got open. So I like the fact that he got the rock, and I think it, it, they truly did utilize him, uh, you know, because they wanted to. That's what it was. He just wasn't in that position to do those things because he wasn't running those routes the prior two weeks. Hey, Beck, qu- uh, two questions for you, man. What is this offensive line's identity? Are they, they're obviously not a dominant run offense. It seems like they're above average as pass as a pass blocking offensive line. Uh, and then back to your, when you were talking about Fournette uh, <clears throat> being a one cut guy, is Rojo kind of that same type of back? They don't really create too much on their own. They need to see that hole and go. Um, and do you think eventually Shady will find his way more so into the run game uh, because he is that guy that can create a little bit on his own. Yeah, you know, they're different runners, uh, Rojo, because Rojo is a little more, he's got a little bit of the movement to him. So I, I would put him, he's a, a perimeter guy. So here's the the conundrum you're in, okay? If you're, if you're setting your run game up for a guy like Fournette, Rojo can run those runs, but he really is more special outside the shoulder of the tackle right so you want to get him kind of in that area where he can read it like a, an offense where they flow everything and he can either get to the edge or make a cut and go and just that that's kind of his game for me honestly from a coy standpoint i don't really want to see him run the football i don't want to see him pass protect i want to see him catch a ball i mean like literally you see when he catches the ball it's like man that, that dude's got some special quickness i don't like the way he carries the ball but that's the way he's done it Will it eventually, it may cost you at some point, it may, you know, usually one time a year it, it popped out with Philly and wherever he was, but you know, that's just his game. Sam you know hates, Sam he hates just, that. <laughs> yeah, he's been so productive, but I mean, when he catches the ball out in space, it's like kind of freakish the way, you know, he can move his body and stuff. So he is a weapon. And and of course, you know, he, you know, dropping a ball a couple of weeks ago, I mean, that's, He's going to be a part of it. He's a special. He's a special receiver as far as out of the backfield is concerned, and he's a he's a killer weapon, man. Brady always had that. Always had those three headed monsters in the backfield, and I spoke about this way before. Like adding him gives them that third phase. So you got that perimeter runner. You got that between 
the tackle guy, and you got a guy that you know can still run it, but you don't have to give him the ball, but he can motion out and just become a receiver. Like, dude, that's or be in the backfield and, and and run swing routes and stuff like that and make yards, real yards. That's kind of what you want for Brady. That's what kind of you know he's had around him for the majority of his career. Um, Anthony, we've played three games, right? And against the Carolina Panthers and against the Broncos, <clears throat> we come at a halftime. Uh, either sluggish, um, maybe not focused. Uh, it seems as if our, our offense even takes their foot off the gas. And what I've noticed is that a lot of times, I think the I think it's like sixty percent of our penalties in these three games. I think we're like top five in penalized teams in the off in the, in the NFL so far. Sixty percent of those penalties have come in the second half of games. So it kind of leads to shooting ourselves in the foot. How do you get a team over that, and what could you attribute that to? Coming out of halftime, you have very experienced veteran coaching staff, and you have Tom Brady, and then you come out third quarter after third quarter, and you just don't seem to be, you know, as focused as the first two quarters. And it, you know, against a good team, you can't do that. You know, we're learning, we're getting things dialed in, so it's it's been kind of uh, in our favor that we played two teams that are, are not as competitive. But against, you know, a Chiefs, against, you know, a, a team that's competing, it's the Saints when we play them again. You can't come out in the second half, shoot yourself in the foot, drop passes, which, again, second half problems. What can you attribute that to in terms of just that slow third quarter week in and week out? Well, you know, listen, there's, you know, 22 players between offense and defense and and how they prepare themselves, you know, whether and when they come out of that locker room, it's really different for everybody. And honestly, I just think in general, like, uh, you know, the, the plan should be more aggressive when you come out. You know, I, I would like to see them put their foot on people's throats and start to get that mentality because you're right. Those games are coming. You know, those, those second half, you know, you're down by three coming into the second half. Like, you've got to be on point. I think Brady uh, will help that. I, I think hopefully you're seeing it. I, I, they're, they're noticing it too. I mean, you know, you don't have to be a, a dummy to think when you watch the film that didn't look like the same team in the first half. And that's something that they're, they'll talk about and they'll get through. And it's, you know, it may be uh, the way they call plays. It may be the execution of the plays. Uh, it, you know, I don't know. It's just different. I mean, they could come out next week or this weekend and, and just blaze it out in, in the second half. And, and then, okay, it's, it's fixed. So, uh, you know, it, it's kind of one of those unexplainable things because you're, you're literally – you know, like, yeah, yeah, coach, like, getting the guys going. Like, it doesn't really work. That's just not how the it, it kind of flies, right? It's it's really about just kind of getting that spark in, you know, kind of what you're going to call and how you're going to go about it and, and understand, like, you know, that, listen, it's nothing, nothing. We're up by three touchdowns. But you know what, man? We got to work on this and get this done, and we have to get ourselves prepared. So, you know, I, I there's nothing really that dictates that. I just think that from a coaching standpoint, you can you can push that button a little bit, and then of course it's up to the players to execute at that point. So was the execute you know when you get penalties, clearly that's not execution. But I think that's a lot of those things are what that team outside of the new blood are or was right yeah. because we saw that so much. Whereas that's not what Brady and Gronk are used to, and that's just what it is. So they it's really on their shoulders to fix that be quite honest with you i think that that's part of the package of bringing them because that is their experience of how they understand how to come out and be that team and i think to me they're the ones that have to portray what that is supposed to be like and how that tempo should be and all that thing honestly i put that on those two player shoulders in particular brady because look this is what he wanted he wanted out he wanted this you know flash go somewhere else get these weapons but again what he brings to the table is so much more valuable than the weapons that are already provided for him from for that are on the field already because he does have to groom these guys as they're playing through the season so that he gets maximum level of effort or whatever you want to say it is concentration level uh you know from from the first quarter to the fourth quarter every single week you're going to have lulls it's natural right but yeah. again i th i really do put it on his back to you know look listen this is how we did things this is what we expected and pass that information out so guys here understand it and be demanding of it because that's the only way they're going to get to where everybody thinks they should go, uh, you know, deep into the playoffs and hopefully, you know, an opportunity to play for a championship. Yeah, the, the one well, thing I noticed is two weeks in a row, 
that opening drive, if they don't have a drop pass, it's a first down and who knows, maybe that ends up being a touchdown drive. And now you've got, you know, the foot on the neck and this is not even something we're talking about. So again, it's the same thing. They're shooting themselves in the foot. They're not executing. Mike Evans is your all pro guy. Can't drop that pass on third and two easy. It's right in your hands. Can't do that. And yeah. a lot of the things though that you see, it, it, they're fixable. So it's not the end of the world. It's not like this schematic, just, you know, disaster that occurs it's just them beating themselves um so again it, you know it's just something that they got to focus on and again i agree with you i think it's something that tom needs to be vocal about if he's he ready I, you know and another thing like the patriots when you watch them even now they're just so disciplined in those aspects teams are not all teams are not like that they're just not the buccaneer shores how long they and that's part of the deal i mean I, I, trust me i want to I would love to be around Tom and, and understand what those things that they did or how they were able to focus. But it really, it's, it's what they did continuously for 20 years. I mean, you're talking about a, a crew that's been together for, for less than three months. I mean, yeah. you know, it's just, you want that style and you want that type of precision, but you're not getting that because they're not that team. They're still part of them is still the team they've been pre Brady and they're trying to develop that culture and i think instead of it coming from the top down it really does come from from what tom can bring uh to the table we can call him tom right i want to call anybody pat because i don't want their their mom to call him out on twitter or anything yeah, like that but yeah out. so you know <laughs> mr brady or whatever you want to call him. but yeah i mean i really do i i just think i would be a player i would want to hear and soak and ask and understand and say listen you know these are i would i would be saturating him with every question possible because it's the only way you're truly going to know how to be a champion because he's done it so many times, you know? So mm -hmm. Anthony, you use a perfect word precision. I mean, that's exactly what you see when you see new England, they are a well-oiled oil machine. They're not out there, you know, killing themselves on every drive. If in the second half, it, it felt like we were always behind the, the sticks, a holding penalty here, you know, a negative play here, uh, just the individual breakdown or something, a, a discipline thing. Uh, fatigue thing I don't know what it is but you you know Brady's in that film room and he's giving them all the stink eye and he's giving them the glare because that guy's not used to that type of type of thing I want to focus a little bit on the defense uh how impressive I mean we're, we're impressed and we don't have the knowledge you have how impressive has Antoine Winfield Jr. been to you somebody who studies the game knows the game what this guy is he as good as everybody thinks well, you know, first, uh, you know, I love Todd Bowles. I am a huge Todd Bowles. And you guys know I cover the Jets as well. So mm -hmm. when Todd was there, I, and I have a relationship with Todd when I played for the Jets. It was his first year in the NFL. He was a secondary coach. And he really has climbed the ladder properly. Went from a positional coach, worked his way to a coordinator, got his head coaching job. But clearly, maybe the best defensive coordinator in football. We have him. And I'm telling you, you see those pages – being flipped in his book, right? And you're seeing it. And and I, I, I clarity when I told you guys before when I had this, I spoke to him. His son plays in a in a seven on seven uh, team in the off season pre pandemic. When we he, my son, his son were out there, we would talk. And I asked him. I said, you know, what do you need? What, what what's lacking? He's like, look, we just got to get that safety. I don't care if it's a ten year guy. I don't care if it's a rookie. He'll be right. I just got to get a guy. And, you know, I was thinking about, my, you know, who's available? Like, and you go down the list of veterans and, and then you see who's available in the draft. And, and, and you, you think about a guy in like Winfield, like, yeah, I remember him. I, a couple Minnesota games, just the dude was just a, a stud. You know, he just, Big Ten, didn't get a lot of love because he was at Minnesota, but he was just dominant every week, super smart. You know, I played against his dad for many years. We came into the league pretty much together. And uh, when he was with the Bills and I was with the Jets, the guy was just smart in the right spot, played a tremendously long career. The lineage is there. And as I watch Antonio every single week, his role is expanding. And I, I, I said this in my podcast is he's becoming, I say it in a, in a positive way, a, a poor man's Jamal Adam right now, because it's the early stages of he's allowing him to do what he allowed Jamal to do in his offense, in his defense in, with the Jets. And it's to be a guy that can be placed anywhere on the field and be a factor. If you can be a factor in cover two, 
You can be a factor at the linebacker position. You can be a factor off the edge. He had, I think, two snaps off the edge. He tipped the ball, and then the other time he got a sack. Mm -hmm. That's like tough to be to do those two things twice. You're only asked to do it twice, and you actually make the play on those two things. It's incredibly hard to do on the football field. Like, you know, it's just one of those deals, and and you like that the execution of what he's doing. So. You see his football knowledge is, is unbelievable, and he's being asked to do a lot of things, and, and that's what I like to see. Todd doesn't care that he's a rookie. He will push the envelope with him and keep developing and keep, keep developing, and the more he can give that guy a rookie, think about how it expands everybody else's role who knows everything and, and seen everything and, and, and can get to those couple pages that, you know, so he doesn't have to wait around. And, of course, the secondary is intact from last year, so they're all on the same page. So... Uh, Todd's done an excellent job. I mean, first down, second down, third down versus the Broncos, man. It was just a, a, a feeding fest in that game. And I just, you know, it was, fu it was fun to watch. I actually enjoy watching the defense more than I do the offense early on in the season. When would you ever say that in the last decade uh, with the Buccaneers? You know, obviously the last nine games or eight games last year. But uh, I, listen, man, it's fun to see the defense do what they're doing and they just look so confident when they do mm -hmm. there's no oh you know you see like guys do stuff and maybe a guy was off and you start seeing the communication with the dbs like oh are you you know i don't i don't see that right now i just see dudes getting into football making plays and just humming man and that's man that's 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 tough dude i mean people are watching the bucks on the opposing team like the head coach bounces into the offensive and defensive room like he thinks, oh, the offense is a problem. Then he slides in over to the defensive side, and like, oh yeah, man, like, they might be a little more better over here right now. So uh, it's all coming together, you know, guys. And and you block a punt too, so your special teams yeah. gets involved. That's even better. I mean, that's just like icing on the cake. So again, you don't want to get too high with it, but I just want to see the small incremental growth with this team, so they're peaking when they need to be peaking towards uh, you know uh, end of November and December. I was going to ask you about that too. Um, this team week one, week two to week three, are you seeing significant growth and seeing that this team is slowly starting to get things together? Because right now I see a top five defense and they're attacking, they're punching you in the mouth. They're doing it with a rookie who's just making a play every time he's asked to make a play. And then you've got Devin White back there. And then you've got the offense. It's, it seems to be behind the eight ball slightly. They're, they're still learning. What do you think this team has done week one to week two to week three that's given you, a, a, you know, a, an overall, like what would you grade them out at after for the first three weeks of this season overall? The whole team overall, just in general. Yeah. Um, I would, uh, yeah, I mean, I would say, uh, I would say a B minus. Um, and because my expectation level is really high. Right. Mm -hmm. So like if they ever hit just an A, like that's like above and beyond a lot of the most of the teams in the NFL. Um, a B minus is, you know, is playoff caliber in my in my book. So um, listen, I, I, I love the fact that Brady really is feels like he's got time and he's comfortable and he's not like worrying about stuff because the line is protecting pretty good. Now they're going to have their bumps and bruises. They're going to, you know, is he going to get hit occasionally? He will. He got hit in New England. I mean, it's just a, the, the deal. But I really do like the way they've played. I mean, I, I find it, I can't pick apart like, oh, the sack. Oh, Donovan gave up a sack. He stinks. Like, eh, you can't really do that, man. It's just, it's not how it works. It's just, is he improving on the things week to week so that he can maximize his play? And I just feel like with worse there, sets a, sets a standard a little higher in the room. And then when you got the guy behind you that you're protecting, it, it, it makes you do and play differently. So does he have his tendencies at times? Yes. Does it show at times? Yes. Just you just want to minimize as much as possible. But I like the protection right now and what they're doing. Um, there are more plays to be made. There, you see a ton on the table that are left out there. I would love, again, I, I said this in my podcast after week one, I love Scotty Miller. I think what a nice surprise for the, for the Buccaneers, but I also I want to I want to see Godwin connection get stronger, and it was till he got you know till he got nicked up, but like that's his that's the dude he needs to go find because that dude is beating guys like he's the guy that's going to give you those big plays and, and stuff like that. But 
you know, the everybody it seems like is understanding on offense that I am a viable option in this pass play when last year I think I was just running the route. Like that's the difference this year. OJ Howard, who may not have thought he was an option in game seven last year on this play, is now a potential one in that play now. Because when he thought he was open last year, he wasn't getting the ball. Now Brady is feeling things a little differently. He under, has a better understanding of what he's seeing. And if you're coming off the line, you're like, sh you know, shoot, this is covered. Like, this is going to be me. Hope he's looking at me. Well, here it is. The ball's in the air. Go yeah. make an ESPN Sports Center catch. And he did, you know. So those are the things, man. So it's like that gives you, if you watch the game, uh, uh, the Monday night game, and you watch the Chiefs receiver get off the snap, it's stupid, right? It's like, Sammy Walker, and then you got um, Tyreek uh, Hill. What's his face? Tyreek Hill coming off the ball. It's like, wow, the speed through the levels is like crazy. Just go. Like, that's what you want your tight ends, and, and you just want them flying, man. And then it just, you can't cover it. Now you got, you know, you're talking about all kinds of options. And, and Brady's not mobile, so he's doing this all from the pocket. Like, Mahomes is creating a lot of stuff. Like, I give him credit because he, he's so accurate doing those things, but. Let's just see if, if Mahomes, you told him, don't leave the pocket for the entire game and let's see how it goes. I don't know if, who I would pick, like, you know, between him and Brady, just to be quite honest with you, because a lot of his stuff is like kind of where's it going? You know, he still hits the guy in his route or whatever, but I'm just saying, like, Brady's everything is from the progression and in the pocket. And if it's not, he's either been sacked or he's going down because somebody's coming at him. So those are something, those are the things to think about. When you watch the how you can compare, like, oh my God, Mahomes is like awesome. Yeah, he's awesome because he gives you other things, and he's accurate with those things. But if he stayed in the pocket the entire time, like, I don't know if he sees the field like Brady. That's he he, he the escapability stuff Brady erases because he doesn't miss the open guy when it's there, right? So that's that's the the huge <laughs> difference between where he is and like some of these other stars that we're all like you know embracing and stuff. And I love. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, but I just, you know, in general, I just, if a guy can do it from the pocket, man, you're just, it's, it's unbelievable. It, is there a factor with moving stuff? Yes. Is there a chance to, you know, get hurt or, you know, have a, an interception those other way? Yeah. But, you know, Brady just, the natural pocket passer that can see those things, it's there and can just go from left to right and understand everything. That's a, such a huge advantage. Anthony, you're a tight end. Uh, you played at a high level for a long time. Are tight ends ever really covered? And was it disrespectful what OJ did to that that corner? I mean, he just – he it looked like a little kid trying to cover a grown – like when your kids are trying to play with you. Like, it wasn't even fair. Can, can we continue to just throw him the ball, let him come down with it, um, especially since Brady is so accurate with the ball? Yeah, I mean, you know, the more opportunities – OJ gets he, uh, his confidence level we be where everyone expects it to be. I mean, that's just the, that's just how football works. Like I say this all the time. My perfect example is Jason Witten. If you watch Jason Witten run, he's not fast. Mm -hmm. If you watch him his rookie year out of Tennessee, when he got drafted by Bill Parcells in the third round, nobody knew or cared or he wasn't, he wasn't going to be like, Oh, this is the guy. But if you design things and give him the opportunities and give him the targets, he became a superstar. He had confidence. He just, he understood how to play the position better because of the fact that he was able to get multiple opportunities every single week. I say this about myself because when I first came in the league, I was getting so many targets and all of a sudden it was like, well, I felt like something happened where look, we got to get the receivers and do it. There were just too many tight end looks. And it just kind of like changed the way I was given those chances, you know? So it just kind of like whatever. But in other guys' cases, you can produce it like a Kittle. I mean, like, I know Kittle. I knew when he came out. I watched him. Did I like him? Yeah. Did I think he was going to be a, a, a kind of a, a better than uh, average tight end, which people didn't think he'd be coming out? I did. But where he's at and what he's doing, don't think that that, that was the – he's just – they're giving him a chance to be who they want him to be. And now he's got confidence and he's just, you know, anything you throw to him, he plucks out of the air. It's just, that's, that's what you're trying to, to build. And yeah, look and at Wall that, Waller in Oakland, the guy who's basically off the, off the team. And now he's a, now he's their number one receiver. You just feed him, And he had some, 
some other issues off off the field that yeah. he was battling some demons. But you know, for him to come back, I mean, you watch him run. It's like, dude, who who's even running with that guy? It's you can't do it. So, um, and and as far as like, not all tight ends are equal. Not all tight ends can do those things. So we have, you know, Cameron's not obviously part of the equation right now, but we have two guys that one's the best ever, and another guy has got the freakish skill set that uh, you know he could do even more than Gronk can do. But he doesn't know the finites yet of what you know he's doing right. Like you see him making the competitive catches on guys and you saw Gronk, like was anybody really around Gronk when he caught the ball? Like there was some separation, you know, some space and he's clearly not as fast as OJ, right? So there's there's an understanding of how you're doing things. Whereas if you have raw talent sometimes, and I think this is what hurt OJ last season is, raw talent just doesn't get it done. If you can mix the raw talent with the finite details of the position. So I always, you know, I begged OJ to like take some time with me as rookie year because we built a relationship, you know, just back and forth. We met a few times, like, you know, let's work together. Let me, you know, I'm not going to tell this guy how to run fast or anything like that, but it's understanding the finite details and he'll get it because he's going to learn it from Gronk. He's doing it every game and he's doing it on film. He's doing it in practice. He'll develop it by exposure to it. But, you know, he kind of, it, it he, he, he could have been ahead of the game a little bit on how he developed himself. And I'm not saying that's why, because I couldn't need him. That's, he could have went to somebody else and got that. But I'm just saying, like, that's how if you're a pro and you're trying to develop your game and be great, that's what the great ones do. When Larry Fitzgerald wanted to be great, you think he was just running routes by himself. He was working with Chris Carter. And, you know, he's doing that. He's working with the great one. The guy, and I'm not saying I was great, but guys that understood and played the position knew the game. So that that's just how we're. And then all of a sudden, you know, He's the best. So I think that can be OJ. It's just that, you know, he's got to know that he, if he wants to take his game to the next level, he has to expose himself to a person like Gronk or somebody like Gronk on the outside so he can finite those skills. Coaching staffs can only do so much. A guy Anthony, that understands the position can do it, then, you know, they could be great at it. Anthony, a, a tight end is a hybrid, right? You're an offensive, you're a lineman, you're a receiver. Is there a bigger learning curve? Like he had to learn BAA's offense last year. He had to learn the blocking schemes. He also had to learn the route trees. It, it, is that could that be part of it as well? I mean, is he's a young guy and then he's thrown into a new system? Uh, they didn't utilize him a lot last year. It was, you think some of that is is you know why he struggled last year? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think he had a good understanding of exactly what they're asking to do offensively in the passing game. Uh, and he probably was running a bunch of routes where he just felt like, you know, I just wasn't even getting looked at. Uh, and, and that takes a mental toll. You know, he's still young. He's still learning. So, um, and then, you know, he's chasing a new contract. And you, when you don't have the year that you want, that's a mental block as well. So, um, you know, I, I, I think that uh, from, from, that, from that standpoint, the parts of the game of being a tight end that is the most demanding is the blocking part because – you think like you got to be big and you got to weigh 260. To, it's really, that's not what it takes. Now I had that combination of girth because I was playing at 275 my last four years in the league, but that that's helpful. But uh, putting the technique together and understanding like, okay, if a guy, a defensive end is on my inside shade, like what are the only, what are the three things he can do from that position? And then using that against him, Okay, like I'll just give you an example. If if I if I'm a tight end and there's a defensive end on the inside of me, like if I'm the right side and he's on the inside of me towards the ball, mm -hmm. I know that no matter where I step, he's got to step with me. So if I want to down block him, okay, and I want to pin him inside, when I I and, and and I'm supposed to you know hook him down, like when I step to the left, he steps to the left. So I can utilize, I can literally utilize his momentum mm -hmm. with my power to mm -hmm. get him leaning to, to step to my step, but purposely trying to get him a little heavy that way. And then I can torque him in, you know, things like that, you know, mm -hmm. or if it's an outside linebacker who's, you know, uh, like a, imagine the, the New England Patriots defense where you have that three, four with the shell and they have that backer kind of looking at you from the outside shoulder, he's got contained. So if I got a ball going inside and I got a running game inside, I'm going to go, I'm going to act like I'm, I'm going to almost outside zoning him. I'm going to step huge to his outside. What is he going to do? He has to honor that 
And now I bring my inside arm and I literally use his momentum to drive him out. So mm -hmm. I actually created a hold just on, on his rules and what he's supposed to do, right? So why can I do that? Well, what if he jumps inside? Well, the only way he can jump out inside of me is if there's tells. And the tell is, is there a safety coming down on the outside? He can replace and contain. That's why, well, no, I, I know that. So I can be a little heavy. So understanding the little techniques of the game and why it happens can make you such a better player, much better blocker and, you know, things like that. And running, and of course, running routes is just, you know, I was never the fastest guy. I understood leverage and things of that nature. But again, it just takes time and, and just you understand. It's the details of it. It's not just, if I just freakish athletic ability, I could just do whatever I want. I can get away with it. But again, my skills diminish. So what did I become a master of? I became a master of blocking and pass protection and intermediate routes. And that extended my career another four or five years when probably I was done because I was considered a guy that was running routes that was slowing down. So that's that's what you do in this game when you want to be the best at it. Anthony, every time you come on here, man, it's, I was gonna say, you're no, slowly, don't go, dude. I got you're, more you're, questions. You're becoming, <laughs> you're, you're becoming my favorite guest because you're so freaking knowledgeable, dude. Like you just taught me how to be a blocking tight end. In, yeah, right. I mean, Sam is ready cool. to go face Von Miller today. I'm ready, bro. I'm ready to mm -hmm. I'm ready to chip Von Miller out, make sure that pitch works. I got it now. <laughs> yeah, I know right. exactly how it's gonna work. No, um, dude, you're 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 a freaking awesome guest, bro. Like you're just so knowledgeable. It's crazy. Um, I thank <laughs> I you for it. joining us. Um, for all of you out there watching, our fan Friday episode is coming up, which means you guys need to get us your voicemails, whether they're talking shit whether you want to hype up your other fans or you want to leave a question for myself, Stank, Christian, and Trevor. So that number is 813-314-7585. Call in, leave a 90 second or less. Please don't make it four hours long. Voicemail, make it fun if you want. Make it all football talk. It doesn't matter. But I, you know, we love the Fan Friday episodes. It's all about you guys. Anthony, again, dude, thank you so much for joining us. Let the people know where they can listen to you. I know you have a couple podcasts going on now, and they're mm -hmm. very good listens. If you guys didn't pay attention today, I mean, his podcast is just as knowledgeable. It's crazy. Go ahead and let people yeah, know how I, they can follow you or find yeah, you. Yeah, you know, I, I started, uh, I do a Walking the Plank podcast, basically, all bucks. Uh, it's kind of a spinoff of my morning segment that I do every Monday morning at 8 a.m. on WDAE for my uh, post-game kind of overfill of what I saw on film, but I get a little more detail in the in the podcast and I drop that Tuesday morning and I do a, re, a preview for the upcoming game dropping on uh, Friday morning. I do one for the Jets as well. If there's a Jet fan that's watching a Bucks uh, podcast, which I doubt, but uh, <laughs> if they do play the Jets at some point, it, it'd be a good way to kind of get on the scoop of what's going on there. And then I do a, a, a just a, a generic sports gambling fantasy show with my partner, Dan Gross, up in New York. And every Monday and Thursday morning at 10 a.m., we do a live one. So just I'm on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Just search Anthony Beck, B-E-C-H-T. I'm verified. I'm checked. It'll come up. And you can see I'm pretty heavy on posting exactly what I'm doing, when I'm doing it. And you can catch all those things there. But um, just having a lot of fun. And I'm, I'm also I'm, I'm giving this knowledge to a high school team that my son plays for. So imagine those offensive linemen and those tight ends, what I'm delivering to those guys, which has been really fun because now I can, what I'm teaching you over Zoom, I'm actually teaching them in person. So that's been uh, kind of cool taking up my time since, uh, you know, I'm not calling the college games right now because of the lack of content that's out there. So mm -hmm. uh, it's been cool. I've been embracing my time and it's been fun. Dude, I mean, awesome, learning, learning how to be a tight end from an NFL tight end in high school. <laughs> That's crazy. These guys look at me different, though. You know, my, my my son obviously looks at me. He knows. But these guys, like, they weren't even born. Like, no. I think my rookie year, they were born that my, my, my rookie year. So it's just like, even <laughs> after that, so like, man, they got to, like, Google search me. Some guys figure it out. Like, it took them a week. Like, hey, did you, you know? So it's it's all good, man. It's just, you know, it's, 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 it's a little more rewarding with younger kids because for them to get to do anything right is hard. So if they can pick something up, it's kind of rewarding because they see it once they see it on film like wow like i can do this i can do that they actually like wait quick story we have a tackle he's a young guy he's huge he's six five 310 pounds but he's like a baby face. he's just not but the ammo on him from moving up from jv was he just wasn't physical and he can't move 
we worked hard with him and understanding what it takes and the different things. And I'm telling you, he's probably one of our best linemen. And it, it's so nice to see him doing things that he didn't realize he could do. And now he just does it consistently on film. And it's like now he went from that to like, I think he's a D1 prospect. So that's just like the how you can change someone. And it's not a, a knock on the coaches in high school because these guys give up, you know, they got other jobs and stuff. Like you don't get a, a former NFL player a lot to help and do those things because they just, they're not doing that, you know, or they're going at a higher level. So it's been kind of cool doing that and helping a kid because that's really like you see potential and they don't see it and you got to get it out of them because if you get it out of them, man, they can get them, they can get their college paid for. It could be an opportunity for their family and it's, it's all there for them. They just got to believe, listen, and just apply it. And when they do it, man, it's, it's kind of rewarding and fun to see you know, being a coach on that aspect. So yeah, you're not wrong, Anthony. I was a Pop Warner coach for almost 10 years. I coached at Wharton High School in Tampa, JV and varsity assistant. And uh, we didn't have anybody out there with <laughs> your type of pedigree. <laughs> not to say that I, you know, I mean, you know, I taught them, we would go to camps and we, you know, we do the best we could, but uh, it would have been nice to have somebody like you on the staff. No doubt. Yeah. <laughs> what, you know what, man? If we ever face the Jets, mm -hmm. we're going to have you come on here and give us some insight. And then we're going to have Anthony <laughs> Beck to come on here and give us some insight on yeah. the Jets. So we'll have you kind of in two windows and you'll just battle it out, right? And then yeah. we'll just like, – yeah, so I'll just, it'll be, I'll just it'll be great. the cap. I'll go over here. Yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll be perfect. No, I'll, I'll clip it together. It'll be it'll be beautiful. Even I'll even give you a different wall background. So it just looks like you're <laughs> – we'll, we'll have Hopefully Anthony you come Becht. on more than that. I'll hopefully you come on like every couple weeks, bro, because – We'll yeah. see. Hey, it might be right. an opportunity for you to go find another sponsor, and then I'll, I'll, I'll be on video <laughs> every week for you guys. I'm just saying, look, you know, we, we can work something out. You know, we can shop it out there. I'm sure there's somebody out there that, that if you're getting some good hits on it, sell it. I don't care. I, I, I'm all for it. Yeah, bro. We're just online male entertainers. You know what you're talking about. You're actually knowledgeable. People tune we're in to see our faces, idiots. really. They just yeah, tune exactly. in to see it. I mean, this is beautiful. You know what I mean? It just, yeah. But, <clears throat> All right, Anthony, thank you so much for awesome, hanging out. Guys. I know we went a little further than you wanted to on time, but so sorry. Uh, yeah, you tricked me in. You got me talking about stories and stuff. <laughs> I, didn't, I, 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 I closed it up. You're good at this. I closed you're it up, smart. and then now you started I, giving me story time. Longer. Exactly. <laughs>